So I've got this PC that I need to upgrade and I thought I'd document the whole uh, process for you because maybe you'll find it useful. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. If you wanna find out how you can upgrade your PC, please let me explain. Okay, now I've got a whole video on the different components that you find inside of a PC, which I'll link to in the description below. Roughly, you're talking about a motherboard and a CPU and then some memory, some storage, a video card of some kind, and of course a case and a power supply. Now let's have a look at this PC that I've got and let's see what we can do to upgrade it to make it just a little bit better. Okay, let's look at the PC as it stands. We've got a fairly good power supply, it's a 500 watt unit, and it's also got all the right connectors on it that we need, so we'll leave that alone. Here we've got an AMD Ryzen 5 1600 CPU, so we're gonna leave that alone, and we're also gonna leave alone the motherboard that comes with it. However, there are four gigs of memory here, and yet we've got four slots, so at least we're gonna upgrade that to 16 gigs. 32 would have been nice, but our budget means we're gonna stay at 16 gigabytes. And we've also got a fairly old and generic video card here, so we're gonna upgrade that. And then if you notice here, there is a fairly old uh, 3.5 inch uh, SATA drive, and we're gonna get rid of that completely, and we're gonna install an M2 module, a 480 gigabyte uh, solid state drive in the M2 module there, which will be our boot drive for Windows. Obviously, we'll also tidy up the wiring here and do some cleaning and things like that, but that's basically where we're at. So in summary, keep the power supply, keep the CPU, keep the motherboard, upgrade the memory, upgrade the storage, upgrade the graphics, and I think that's it. Now there's a budget attached to this upgrade, so I've made some decisions about what I'm gonna leave and what I'm gonna upgrade. So I'm leaving the CPU and the motherboard. If this was a new build, then maybe we'd do things differently, but here we're gonna leave the CPU and the motherboard and we're gonna concentrate on the storage and on the system RAM. And then to stay within budget, the graphics card that I've chosen is not a brand new one. It's actually a second hand one, but it's much, much better than the one that was already in the system. So at least we're giving the graphics uh, an uplift, maybe not to the best, but certainly to something that will be usable for gaming uh, and for video editing. Let's just talk about buying the pieces that you'll need for an upgrade. Now, if you don't do very many upgrades, or you're not really familiar with PC parts, then this can be a bit intimidating. But the key here is to check out the manual and the specifications for your motherboard over on your motherboard producer's website, because there it will tell you what is compatible in each of the different slots, or what type of memory it takes, for example, or what type of graphics card slot it has. Now, in some of the websites, they'll even list what devices they've actually tested, what memory modules they've actually tested. So if you really are unsure, you can actually pick one from their list. But in general, if you stay within the specification, for example, this motherboard uses DDR4 RAM. So obviously I'm not gonna put in DDR3 RAM. I have to put in DDR4 RAM. And then there's the, the choice of the speed. And really you wanna make sure the speed fits into what it says your motherboard supports. And really is as simple as that. One quick tip about buying the M2 module for storage, there are actually two different types of module you can get for storage. One actually acts as a SATA drive, so it looks like a normal SSD, two and a half inch drive, as far as the system is concerned, and its speed will actually be limited to that the same as a SATA drive. The other type actually uses the PCI Express bus and it can transfer the data much faster. Now the SATA drive type has two notches in it, whereas the one that uses PCI Express has only one notch in it. So There's a little thing to watch out for there when you're picking the M2 module. Okay, so that's about it. You need to buy the stuff, you need to make sure it is compatible with what you already have, and then you need to actually go ahead and fit it. So let's have a look at what I did. Okay, so the first thing we do is remove this SATA drive. So we need to unplug, first of all, the data cable. And now we need to remove the power cable. Now, obviously the cabling here in this PC is a bit of a disaster. We'll tidy that all up at the end once we've got everything nicely fitted. So let's undo the screws. Just one screw keeping this in here. That's pretty easy. We'll just take that out and out should come the drive, just avoiding all the bits and pieces. And we're gonna replace the SATA drive with a 480 gigabyte M2 module. Now fitting these M2 modules is quite simple. There's just a little slot which you kind of put the module in at a bit of an angle, and then you just lightly push it down and screw it into place with the provided screws. 
So next door is to replace the graphics card. This isn't a new one, but it's a better one that was already in the system. So we need to take the old one out and remember to push that little tab at the bottom of the PCI slot there to get it out. You take that away and just slot in the new one. Should be fairly simple. Next up, we need to fit the memory and we're putting in a pair of eight gigabyte uh, modules. Now they need to go in a pair. Now normally you'd put this these in in slots one and three, but actually if you look at this motherboard, it says you should put them in first of all, in slots two and four, DIMM A2 and DIMM B2. So that's a little unusual, so it's always worth checking your motherboard either on the motherboard and the instructions to see which way around these should go, but they're fairly easy to install once you know where you're putting them. Okay, so let's reboot and see whether our changes have had a positive effect. Okay, so here we are inside the BIOS and the first thing we notice is that here we've got a hard disk, the XPG Gamix S11, that's the M2 module that I've installed. And if we go over here to memory, we can see we've got 16 gigabytes uh, in slots two and four and it's running at 2.4 gigahertz. So that's that great. So our M2 module has been installed and our new memory has been installed, excellent. Now obviously after that I needed to do some cleaning because the case was quite dirty and I did need to sort out all those cables. Now for cable management of course you can use zip ties uh, but I personally I like to use these velcro ones that stick together because you're actually able to reuse them which means you can use as many as you like, really tidy up those cables, get that routing nice and then if you need to move something, if you're not happy with how something is, of course they just undo and you can redo them and put them back in again. You buy these in about packs of 100 I think of that. That's my personal preference because zip ties work just as well. And then the final step of course was to install the operating system and the drivers and get the system back up and running which I did do and it was absolutely fine. I'm not going to show you how to do an operating system install today, that's for maybe a different video. Okay well I really hope you enjoyed this uh, quick look at how you can upgrade your PC. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. If you like the video please do give it a thumbs up. Also do subscribe to the channel and if you hit that bell notification icon then you'll actually get told every time I upload a new video. Okay that's about it. I'll see you in the next one. But personally, I prefer to use these, these Velcro ones that stick together. <laughs>